Hi, I'm Keith, and um, I've come primarily, I think, to talk about my hurdy-gurdy playing. I'm not a professional hurdy-gurdy player. I don't think there are many out there that are. Might be one or two, but it's been a passion of mine for a long time now. I've spent all of my adult and working life in Cornwall, and the hurdy-gurdy is an instrument that I developed a passion for whilst being here, so it has a sort of connection to the locality as well. I'm a semi-retired music teacher. I've been a school teacher for most, the vast majority of my working life. I play with a band uh, called The Murmurations and I also do solo gigs. And I did about a month ago a tour of the Isles of Scilly. <laughs> it's quite a small tour. The instrument that was the forerunner to the hurdy-gurdy was something called an organistrum, which was also the forerunner to the church organ, weirdly. It was a a, a two-person instrument, one person turned the wheel and another person pressed the keys which stopped off the strings to enable the melody to be played with some strings as drone strings. Not the organistrum was one of the first things to use drones. Built into st the stonework of a, of a cathedral doesn't make it a very portable instrument, does it? And so what basically the French people, I say French, loosely French, did was to turn it into a portable and sort of buskable folk instrument. So they reduced the size of it because the organistrums, organistra, organistrums, were big. The vielle à roue, as the French called it, shrank down to the size they are now. So that it's about, I don't know, two and a half, two feet from end to end. In generic Scandinavian, but I think it's specifically Swedish, Hurdy-gurdy means thingamajig. In French, they're called vieraux. In Spain, they're called zanfona. In Portugal, they're called symphonie. In Germany, they're called dreleider. So they've got a different name in every language. But we actually don't have a word. We just use the Scandinavian word that means thingamajig. So obviously, when they landed on these shores, nobody had a clue. Best pictorial evidence is actually in carvings of various cathedrals. Best one probably Santiago de Compostela in northwestern Spain. Very clearly a hurdy-gurdy being played alongside some other very recognisable medieval instruments. Medieval carvings can be open to interpretation. You know, there's all sorts of weird things go on in the heads and the minds of the carvers. Certainly there are some that look like they could be functioning early hurdy-gurdies. They date back to the sort of 10th and 11th century, so they've been around for quite a while, quite a while. You can't just go to a music shop and buy one. Most of them are handmade by specialist makers. Once you've done that, once you've learned to play it, once you've <laughs> sent your family mad by lots of quite loud erratic noise rattling around the house, you then have to find an unsuspecting audience. My unsuspecting audience was in Falmouth. I developed my playing at various venues in Falmouth as part of a French and Breton dance night. And recently, as I uh, was saying, I did a little mini tour of the Isles of Scilly. Uh, well, I say the Isles, I did one island. I did St. Mary's, uh, but I did four different venues. And I played for food and accommodation and my trip over there. But fits the tradition of sort of troubadours. So I'm going to use that word. Don't use that word very often, do you? Breton tunes do fit the instrument really well. So it seemed natural to adopt quite a Breton repertoire into the stuff I play because the, the instrument itself has a pretty odd scale. It's not do, re, mi and so on. It has got a slightly odd scale and it's loud. That's, that is a big advantage if you're playing in a pub. This is cotton wool and the strings are sheathed with it so that they don't look wear away on the wheel. The open strings are that amount of string. Pushing the levers effectively engages a fret. So you're not playing it like a piano you're actually, it's an, like an automatic fretboard. And 
some, but not all, of the accidentals, like the black notes. And then the drones. So the, the playing on Shirley Collins' album No Roses by Francis Baines. Listen to the murder of Maria Martin. And that was the first Hurdy Gurdy track I ever heard, but I heard it live. That's that one. This, these guys, Menestra, who have played in Falmouth at the Poly, uh, are a contemporary Brett on Hurdy Gurdy trio and the young guy is a, is a virtuoso Hurdy Gurdy player but has the benefit of having a father who's a Hurdy Gurdy maker so he's probably been playing since he was 18 months old or something. Manestra, really good. Current, not obsolete. Um, this chap, Patrick Buffard. He's from the Auvergne which seems to be Hurdy Gurdy central in the world. Like, you are the odd person out if you don't play hurdy-gurdy in the Auvergne, apparently. This is um, a band called Whirling Pope Joan, featuring Nigel Eaton, who was probably the second hurdy-gurdy player I ever saw play live. And his pal, Cliff Stapleton, was the person who taught me to play. Uh, but this is good. This is a good album of mixed stuff. Whirling Pope Joan. Same guy playing ancient beatbox. Gets a bit funky. Uh, sort of an offshoot of Blow Zabella. Um, this is where hurdy gurdy start to get electronic. There are solid bodied hurdy gurdies now, by the way, with MIDI pickups on, which is pretty weird. <laughs> Could be fun though. And surprisingly, Arcade Fire. Neon Bible. Is it Neon Bible? Yeah. Uh, the track Keep the Car Running features a hurdy-gurdy. And if that's not rock and roll, I don't know what is.